Okay, so it's time for the Q&A, and I'm sure you guys have lots and lots of questions. So let's please welcome back to the stage producer and director Don Porter and producer Julie Goldman. Don, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you have a sort of, uh, great track record as a, a producer, yet this is your first uh, uh, film as a director. So what was that like? Uh, it was terrifying. <laughs> well, that stuff you tell people to do, it's not actually so easy. <laughs> um, but... Uh, <laughs> it's safe. Um, but, uh, you know, when I met Don Rapping and the lawyers he trains, I'm a lawyer, and I was really just blown away by what they were doing, and I thought it was so important, and I thought I was in a unique position as a lawyer and a person who worked in media. So I just, you know, I did it. <laughs> so I just kept going, and even though it was probably also a good lesson for my kids, I think. My kids are 9 and 11 now, but they were little when I started, and seeing, like, I didn't, I didn't know some things, like something I just had to figure out myself. So it was a big learning process, um, but in the end, you know, it was worth all the suffering. The film uh, premiered uh, at Sundance, and ever since that has been uh, uh, sort of shown at a, couple, a number of other uh, film festivals in the U.S. My, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what, how the film has been received and the reason why I'm wondering that is because over the last few years I think you guys uh, will agree with me we've been seeing a, a number of films coming from the United States that somehow seem to uh, been able to kind of like put that magnifying lens on on issues that you find almost uh, unbelievable uh, and, uh, and you wonder why so it, it had to be a documentary filmmaker that uh, kind of uh, took upon the job of, of uh, raising sort of awareness for those issues. So yeah, what was the reception? I think, I think like? that's really true. Um, and I think, you know, I worked in news for eight years. And at the time I worked, you know, there's, there's I, I have a lot of admiration for investigative reporters and for reporters who can take a complicated story and boil it down really quickly. And I think we've cut our newsroom staffs. We don't train young journalists. Um, and so, and then there's a shift towards reality TV that is not real and is, you know, telling very similar. I like to be entertained as much as the next person, but I, I think we've skewed really far in one direction. But I don't know, Julie's produced a number of films, so maybe you would talk about all the different issues. No, I totally agree with what you're saying. I mean, I think that also, um, you know, with this film, it has a, a couple of things that, that happen. There are people want to know, okay, well, what do we do now? You know, it's, it's one of those films that they're saying, you know, mm -hmm. well, okay, mm -hmm. what are the things that we can do to take some of the burden off of these young public defenders um, who are, you know, our first line of defense in so many ways? So that's one very common reaction that we've been having in yeah. screenings. And also I think people are kind of are emotionally connected to um, Brandy and Travis in June. Okay, so I'm sure there's plenty of questions, so um, I guess it's your turn here. Yes. Yeah, did you film many other cases and selected this one, or that that was mm -hmm. um, Sorry, what's the question? Uh, the question is uh, how many cases were right. filmed. Yeah. So, um, uh, because I'm a lawyer, so I read, one of the ways that I selected the characters was by which characters we would have access to in court. So, uh, Brandy and Travis, um, in June we had, we had some filming, but the schedules were, it's difficult to film in court. Cases are constantly continued. Um, so, uh, Travis and um, more Brandy had said, you know, these might be some good cases to film. But we filmed a number of cases in Travis's court, um, Judge Deal, it's actually his name. Um, and uh, he, you know, I, I read the rule and, you know, I was like, it looks like I can just file a motion and get access to the court if he grants it. So I faxed in the motion. And then to my surprise, you know, he let us, and at first he made us stay and like, it was like two cameras and three people and we were in like two feet of space, we were very close. And then as he got comfortable with us, he allowed us more cameras and he let us mic him and mic his desk. So over, we were there, you know, several weeks, um, just different cases, but we also got to meet the families and then those, so those were the strongest cases. Um, 
Uh, yes, there's a question in the back. Um, that's a great question. So the question is um, how, like, uh, this sensitive person um, felt uh, frustrated and like it's so futile and um, unjust. Um, and that I, I have to tell you, it was really hard. You know, I have a really nice life. I have a great husband and healthy children. Um, and uh, I would come. I would go film. It was it, two of the hardest things were watching Brandon go to jail because um, we'd spent the day with him the day before ate with him, talked with his parents, saw him. And then when he was led away, the next day, I was, you know, I flew home and I was, I, all week I was like, what's Brandon doing? Is he in a cell? Is he okay? You know, it's really, it's just so stark. And I would walk around my nice town and think, they don't have any idea, like, what's happening. So it was hard. And actually, um, at one point, I didn't always deal with it very well, to tell you the truth. So at one point, um, my five-year-old was like, can I have some other video game or something? And I'm like, no! Are you in jail? And my husband was like, he's five. And my husband was like, you have got to like turn it down. But I, I, I tried to use that feeling and think, this is what it's like to be a public defender. Because now I care so much that I'm so bummed out. And I'm bummed out about one case. You know, and they're having to get do this again. So it's hard, um, but you know it's important. Don't you think Rap would say it's really important that people do feel that incredible frustration because that's going to lead to change. And that's the only thing that can lead to cha lead to change is the awareness. I mean, John John Rapping is like unbelievable. He's he's that times a thousand. He's so intense and he is so directed about this. And and this actually is really going to help him. The film will help him really reach more and more people, which is great. Gideonspromise.org if you're interested in their work. Um, make sure to, it's hard to see from here. Okay, here. there you go, at the back end, and I'll go, yes. Could you speak uh, or tell us something more about Brandon and how he's doing? Uh, the question is, how is Brandon doing? Um, Brandon is actually doing pretty well. He is uh, studying, he's taking classes, and he has been a really good prisoner. His foster dads uh, see him once a week. Um, he's writing a lot. He's uh, actually found that he enjoys writing and it helps him with his emotions. And uh, Travis, although he, his foster dads hired a private attorney to try and appeal, so you can't appeal and say Travis was ineffective if it's, he's still the lawyer. So even though he was like released of his obligations, he's been helping Brandon and is hopeful that he may actually um, be able to get him. He's been, he's been able to keep him in the jail, not the prison. The jail is, is local. That's a big thing. He has family nearby. So he's actually doing pretty well. There was a question back there in the white. Yes. Public defenders becoming judges. Um, it's usually the prosecutors who become judges. Uh, Judge Deal, who you saw in the movie, used to run the prosecutor's office. That is the much more common path than defense attorneys. Um, uh, judges are often elected, um, and they're not electing people who they think are getting people out of prison. Who's your electorate? The people. You know, so like if you're in Gainesville, you run for election for a judge, and uh, you run just like any elected office. So it's not usually defense lawyers, particularly public defenders. I think it's, um, I, I can't tell you certainly, but my anecdotal filming for the last four years is it's very rare. Okay, we have time for two more questions, so we're going to go here first. Uh, what is the salary of public defenders, and is it, because it's clearly not enough, and is it up to the state on what that level is? Um, the question is about what the salary is and who sets the salary. So um, every state uh, has its own uh, decision about how to provide service, defense services to poor people. So it's different state by state. Um, in Mississippi, where June practices, they started about 35,000. Um, where Travis practices, they started at 40,000. Um, he's now up to like 60,000, which he thinks is a very princely sum. He thinks he's really living large because he's got extra bills like food and gas. 
um, the state uh, does set the salaries. And um, <gasps> in many cases, the prosecutors make 15 to 20% more, um, individual prosecutors, plus they're given things like cell phones and sometimes laptops or iPads or things. So um, in the fed that's in the state system. In the federal system, 95% of the federal money that goes in criminal justice goes to prosecution. Less than 5% goes to defense-oriented services. Okay, I think there was one back there. Yes. Can you comment on how the uh, public defenders handle the volume of cases we heard about, like mm. 500 felony cases a year? It just uh, boggles the mind. Uh, the question is about how the public defenders handle the cases. So, uh, you know, people have coping mechanisms. I mean, one of the things I was so struck by was these lawyers are so young and they just say it as it's a matter of fact. You know, they, so when I was a lawyer, I probably worked on maybe four matters at a time, and that was a lot. I thought that was a lot of matters, too many matters. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I just kept being incredulous that they were doing so many cases. And uh, the case that, as at the very beginning, or Travis gets the not guilty, he got that case on a Friday, and he tried it on a Monday. And he yeah. spent his whole weekend talking with the guy and investigating. So I think you know that is what leads to burnout is um, you do what you can with what's in front of you, but uh, knowing that you have <coughs> not been able to give your attention, that's what eats at them, I think, the most, like probably even more than the money, um, is that feeling that maybe I missed something and someone's in jail because of that. That guilt is really the hardest thing for them to deal with. Well, great. I, we've run out of time. I'm sure uh, Don and Julie will be happy to continue the conversation outside. Uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much for coming to Corona. Thank you guys for coming. Don't forget to vote. And uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, we just did want to let you know we have an outreach campaign. Um, and if this is important to you, please do check our website. Uh, it's gideonsarmythefilm.com uh, to see what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.